Were you a big drinker or drug user? Yes. Go on. Well, I have uh, a couple of different engagements with sobriety. Like I uh, got sober initially in the mid 90s because I was having a really bad problem with alcohol and drugs. And um, so then I got sober and um, my life started to go really well. You know, when I moved to New York for a while and I did uh, shows off Broadway there and it was really, really great. And um, I got married and everything was really amazing. But then I uh, started to realize that um, I wanted to improve my life more. So I became uh, vegan. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to become a raw vegan. And then I'm going to become a raw vegan chef. And I'm going to start <laughs> I just start sprouting my grains before I eat them. All of, are the feces coming back? I feel like there's so much are... feces. <laughs> and um, I started going to these camps where I would just like fast for like weeks. And then I lost my mind. Like I just got so rigid about this idea of like, I'm going to be pure. I'm not going to have any chemicals in my system. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm there uh, like... With all of these, also like the old celebrities who I cannot name, mm -hmm. but <laughs> very good, like other like people in show business who are just like we're all like in the desert and we're just like uh, trying to rid ourselves of everything, and I just couldn't do it, and so I went came back to L.A. after one of those. What was the breaking point? Was there a moment of like this is so stupid I have to stop? I uh, well I got in a business with another woman who was engaged in all this with me and she tanked the, your it. Your vegan chef yeah, business? It wasn't, a, it, was, it was something else, but she tanked it and I was so mad at her that I was like, I used that to just kind of like go off and then I went downtown and somebody handed me this Jamba juice filled with psilocybin mushrooms and I drank the whole thing. And I was not right in the head for a while after How long? that. It took about 13 years to kind of come down off of that. That if anyone had paused it and said how long, I would not have, I wouldn't have even put 13 years as one of the options for how long it took. 13 it took years. 13 years right, to snap out of What's the first it. eight hours of after you drink the Jamba Juice? So, you, so you're you, yeah. you're a successful comedian. Yeah. You're famous, you've done shows, you, I'm the one that I want, all the popular yeah. specials. And you then you kind of go and you're living a extreme alternative life. Yeah. You start some kind of weird business. Look it up if you want. <laughs> and the woman tanks it. And then you're furious. Furious. You go downtown. What, where downtown? It was this party that I had. Um, I used to have one of those egg chairs, mm -hmm. you know, that has like stereos inside. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Sure. Uh, Mid-century thing. So I gave it to this artist and he made an installation of it. And so we, I was going to the, the gallery to see it. And uh, I don't remember who it was. Somebody just handed me a psilocybin drink and I just drank the whole thing. And it's like- Knowing what it was. Knowing what it was. And being- Full well. Was this breaking your sobriety or yeah, had you done- totally breaking my sobriety. Totally, over after 10 years. Yeah, total, seven years. Totally. Uh, and But not only that, I wasn't eating sugar- I wasn't eating. So it was a lot. It was everything <laughs> and nothing processed. Everything uh, would just went down, went down. And after that, I just didn't go. I was like out for 13 years. That's out of my mind. recent, fairly recently. Well, so, uh, yes. 16, so, 2016, yes, so 2016, 2016, I finally came to my senses or was brought to my senses. What were the 13 years like? I was just drinking and on oh, drugs. Oh, you like, went back into yeah, a credit crazy addiction, and 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 probably still high from the psilocybin mushrooms. Like, probably still out of it. Like, I think that. What do you think it did to you? If you could part, if you could guess, it was just like I had lived so rigidly, like as this monastic life for seven years, and thinking like I'm going to be, which in and of itself is its own crazy addiction and totally its own crazy. like. I like it. I like fasting. I li like like mm -hmm. the Catholic in me mm -hmm. likes the sort of self flagellation yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. And you then you really did it. I did. I did it. And then it was. Did you the feel other way. better, or did do you even remember how you felt physically? Is it when people go, "Do you feel better because I'm vegan?" I'm like, not really. I did. You did feel better. I did. I think that there was 
things about it that I thought was really um, remarkable. What was also weird was things that were very wrong, which were like, I didn't realize, like I stopped having a period for several several years during that, like, which is really weird. Yeah. Um, that shouldn't happen, especially in my 20s at that time. You know, um, I just stopped, I uh, just stopped really understanding what, <laughs> what everything was like made for. Like I was so like outside of the realm of being able to do anything. But you're still a comedian, right? Yeah, yeah. You still do comedy. And it's going great? Yeah, it's going great. And, but you, but off stage, it's like... Just so rigid. You couldn't eat were anything. Were they in Tupperware? Like, or everything glass? Was in, everything was in like, well, tu- probably Tupperware plastic. So that I didn't have like a thought about like recycling or anything like uh-huh. that or plastic. Um, but I could, you just couldn't go to restaurants. You mm-hmm. couldn't go, you couldn't have anything at a club. There was just nothing, you, nothing there for you. Nothing, anything possible. Did you feel righteous? No, I just felt so removed from any real ability to engage with society but did that make you feel righteous or you just felt uh alienated probably alienated a bit righteous at first but then alienated but then i was also around people who were doing the same thing so all my friends were also trying to like be raw vegans as well yeah i mean whenever i walk past the raw vegan place i'm like what's that place on uh west third in new york it was like rain but it was by nyu but it was there forever Mm -hmm. and the thing about raw vegans they don't look healthy. No, they they're, none of them look healthy. They very, look pallid it, and sad. It's just there's a it's just a, a life of strife. And I was doing a lot of yoga, and then I thought, oh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be a yoga teacher. And then I was taking all of these classes from Bikram, who's actual so, Bikram, actual Bikram, who was so mean. It's not what the documentary is. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mean. The women of the trash. Yeah, I picked them from trash and give them life. And uh, so abusive to all the students and everybody trying to like become a teacher. And the place stunk like. In New York or LA? In LA, just stunk like, you know. Of sweaty people. Asses. And feces. And lots of feces. (laughs) Ladies. So much. Uh, uh, Yeah, this is what I mean, like you're interesting. You make, you've never not been interesting. (laughs) I don't even know that. Yeah. And did the. What? Tell me the first eight hours of the mushrooms. Well, I was so high, and then I came back to my house, and um, everybody was kind of like looking at me, like uh, my husband was looking, like, "What? The, that's so weird that you did that." And then um, my animals were just really scared. I had three dogs, and they were like all like something something's very wrong and they would just avoided you yeah they just didn't want to they didn't want to talk to me <laughs> they didn't want to be petted they didn't want anything to do with me and i was just out of it and it took me a long time to sort of not be really altered from that trip but then it just gave me the permission to do any drug and eat anything after that and did you was any of it enjoyable yeah yeah <laughs> totally yeah well that's the thing with drugs and alcohol and food it's like enjoyable but it's also not because it's just like it's enjoyable for the initial first part but then it just becomes really like oh you want more or you're trying to not be hung over or whatever oh it's all reaction to the for the thing you did most yeah. recently yeah so it's just trying to get that balance of whatever chemicals right and i could never do it I could never quite achieve what was good about the high that I remembered, what was good about this, what was good about this. And did that husband leave you? Uh, yeah, yeah, we split up. Great. And uh, good for him. Good. <laughs> and did you, did anyone along the way going, hey? Let's... Yeah, yeah. And also, that that's what happened. After 13 years, my friends were like, that's enough. And I got uh, kidnapped and I went to treatment. And I stayed in my facility um, on Mulholland, a very nice place. Sure. Um, How I much stayed a month? There, uh, oh God, it was a lot. It was like yeah. 30000 I was going to guess that. Um, but I stayed there for a year and nine months. That's comedy money there, guys. It's, <laughs> it's, it's where a lot of money went, but it was really worth it. I mean, what's your life worth, you know? like I Yeah, thought, no, of course. And what did you, why did you stay at the facility so long? I uh, really, I really thrive in an institution. <laughs> like, 
It's where I belong. It's where I really am at my best. <laughs> what part of it? Everything. Like I love the pro. What was it? Was it regimented? Yeah, there was group meals. There was group meditation. There was uh, a lot of physical exercise. There was. Um, you know, there's hot people around. There's people who are just a mess that are just fun to watch. Who There must have been people that went in with you, got sober, left, fell off the wagon and went back. Yeah, there's a lot of that. But then nowadays, they would just die. Because of fentanyl? fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah, fentanyl took out about 18 of the people that I was with in the facility. And then um, some people just would go downstairs and hang themselves. In the facility. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay. And was it like the, the polyamory thing where like there's rooms here? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of places. My you know, you can do that here because we <laughs> don't know what's happening. But just stuff like that would happen or, you know, they would just, uh, yeah, they would just drink themselves to death, which is horrible. And a couple of people fell in their house and they just died, you know, like. What do you think it is? Uh, meaning it's a very broad question, but like you just think it's a disease like a dissy, like a, a just, it's hard. I think some people are in bodies that are very hard experiences. Yeah. And they they self-soothe, so to speak. They're self-soothing. Also, like, my theory is that plants are trying to kill us. Like, all of like the, mo this. the like most this. harmful things are plant-based. So, except fentanyl is not. But the idea of fentanyl is plant-based. Like, it's op opiates. And opiates are trying to... Like the, I, but you, the, these plants in their normal form kind of couldn't kill us. No, but they're trying to evolve through science to murder us so that we can go back to the earth and fertilize them to regenerate. I'm sure you've heard that thing about cats. There's a cat. There's a virus that cats can implant in people, mm -hmm. a brain virus. Mm -hmm. that It's basically, it's like a long, it's like a thousand year play from felines mm. to get a, to so they can eat us. I like that. I'm sure you do. I knew, I, like I knew you'd get a kick out of it. I like that. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny that the, and do you actually, I, I can't disprove your plant theory. Well, it's like grapes, like, you know, produce alcohol mm -hmm. so that they're like really just trying to, it's a long game of trying to get us in the ground so they can eat us. I, d disprove it. <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.